Thanks for the sub, John. You're here to catch a. You're here to catch one of the battles. I am here. I'm just <laughs> just starting soon. Um, out of the battles that are happening tonight... Only one battle, really? Holy shit. Thanks, Rima. Love you. Alright. I will start it up in a couple of minutes. Alrighty, hello ladies and gentlemen, as I got here, I'm bringing to you day 12 of the CBL Asia Division for the season of Paragon. I'm going to be watching, hopefully, we're going to be watching the Four Seasons versus CTE, otherwise Crazy Tiger Entertainment. Um, might get kicked out of this one, so we'll have to wait and see. There is only one battle happening, so um, I guess first in, first serve is for, um, first in, first serve for this one. So, it's going to be a little bit of a gamble, but otherwise, hopefully, we get to stay. The other battles that are happening tonight, I will skip over the battles that are not happening. So, in the second set after the um, FS versus CTE, we have the BXWL versus BPJ um, in the in the A Group A, and then Group B we have MTA versus WLBG. In Group C, we have GST versus KBB, and that is all of the matches that is going to happen today, only four. I am long day, been hanging out for some CB. L, chill. Man, I hope you're having a great day, John Rima. My goodness. Um, I'm not going to be honest, last... Um, the 22nd? Asia Division, and on the 22nd for the South American Division, they were amazing to watch. Really fun to watch, in fact. Um, I think the teams really, really, um, really, really showed off what teamwork can 
look like, although failure. Um, there are some hit and misses, but I do I did enjoy watching that battle quite a bit. I think um, I'm gonna, it's going to be a bit of a um, I think it's going to be a bit of a struggle here to know who's going to win. I think Four Seasons has classically been one of the stronger teams. I'm not sure how well CTE is going to be. I've not seen too many of the um, not seen not seen too many of these battles from either of these teams, but definitely. Um, definitely think that Four Seasons is the favorite to win here. Oh, man. I just hope these guys can show me something that I don't know. I really do love commentating for these tournaments, especially when these guys show us the very, very pinnacle of teamwork and strategy. A little bit of a cheese ending. I mean... Riverland Castle, have not seen this in a while, had a lo long string of hidden cities. Riverland Castles, we're back here again. Classically, I think this is defender orientated, but Four Seasons choosing to attack here, very interesting indeed. I think it, they're, they're going to have a hard task for them. They got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight people, so... That guy, sorry, two more observers can come in by the looks of it. Ooh. We got two minutes before the um, before it starts up, but in the meantime, I might be getting my dinner soon. So I might be eating in the middle of the stream, so don't mind me. I'll be back in a second. now. Hopefully my nipples don't show through this shirt. Hooey! Apparently there are some new campaigns. What are we looking at? Ah, no. Nah, just the regular stuff, I think. Alright. That's fine. So I hope you guys enjoyed those drops. In the meantime, we are at the 8 o'clock. The ready should be called in a few minutes. What is this? Please enter the room. Alright, there is the ready. I think someone got kicked. That's why there's a QQ. Alright. Four Seasons and CTE battle has are both ready. We're going to be setting up the first match of the day here on Riverland Castles. Four Seasons versus Crazy Tiger Entertainment. I'm really wondering what strategy... Oh, wait. I don't even know who's attacking first. So, who's attacking first? Anyone could know. But now we do. We have four seasons attacking first. 50-50 chance. But, alrighty. Hopefully these guys got a plan. I've seen many a time the Siege Tower is being suppressed really heavily. Um, really got to choose whether or not to basically go up those um, ladders or go through the front gate. There has been very, very good attacks on Riftland Castles. Frightening can be. Got... Whoa! Two moles, that's a string of short swords. One, two, three, four, five short swords. One glaive. I want to see how well they do. Four pole axes. Pole axes never going out of style, apparently, with four seasons. One musket, one jewel blade, and one pike. On the other hand, we have four pole axes. Again, pole axes very, very popular here. One one glaive is an interesting pick. One short, uh, one short sword, one long sword. Triple... Musket. I'm thinking those guys might switch out to a spear or a pike later on. We got two pikes and one jewel blade and one short sword. Well, I mean, one short bow. One short bow might be going to be very deadly to suppress those heroes. Range classes are classically better on the defense, so we're going to see CTE probably being able, um, using the wall to their advantage here. Although longbow has classically been much better on a the high ground advantage can be a little bit difficult to get value out of a longbow, though. Mm. 
Alrighty. Both teams readying up. Didn't have a look at the units though, so let's have another check. My face is in the way, but I will tell you anyway. We got one Imperial Spear Guard. Very interesting to see. Coming! Uh, one Metallator. Two Berserkers in reserve. We got lots of cavalry coming out from the attack uh, defenders here. Sorry. Uh, while you guys, while the first section might be a little bit boring, looks like they're going for a little bit of a climb here. Sorry. I don't know why the Imperial Spear Guys is moving up so close. So they trip that first. Tripping that first one there. Got some Fenris. So triple Fenris. I think um I think having some low low um low tier units here at the beginning is really good at suppressing the um suppressing the ladders. Probably good cost value as well. You don't exactly lose too much value if they get blistered, I'm pretty sure. Yep, there it comes out the blisters. I'm gonna be back in two seconds. Oh my goodness, normally I would be eating something beforehand, but um, Siege Tower is getting very close. No, um, doesn't look like CTE is depressing the Siege Towers. We had the Ballista, only one Ballista goes down, or they get destroyed, since I wasn't here. Chucking up some regular Surf being shot by Falconetti's the entire time, actually. I wonder how much, uh, doesn't look like too many losses, actually no losses. This is actually kind of huge, picking up all of these Surfs for free. These Surfs can be useful in scenarios. Um, I don't know why you're rushing up the surfs up here. Probably to gain superiority. We got some Iron Reapers here on the right hand side. No one to contest it. We have the front gate also opened up. Man, this is a scattered fight if I've ever seen one. Four Seasons also pushing the advantage as all, everyone from CTE has head over to the A point here. Um, short Sword goes down almost instantly. Now getting pushed out by Iron Reapers and Fenris Pack. This Imperial Spear Guard is about to melt into nothing if the... Uh, oh, maybe not, actually. Wow, doing very well. Tanking most of the Fenris and the Imperial Spear Guard. I mean, Iron Reapers there. What is happening? So come, CTE just gave up defending that section, and the retreat is kind of scattered here. I don't know why they gave up in such a weird fashion here. Two more members from um, CTE has been caught here at the bottom of the stairs. We have Fenris Pack versus Berserkers. Berserkers could go on and crush this medal. Oh, Fenris Pack being um, Fenris Pack scaring them off. Though it does look like they disengage. This retreat seems very strange. I would have either done it earlier or um, yeah, very strange. Um. Could have taken the fight at A. Retreat back inside to this uh, point here. So, uh, I don't... I question this cauldron. This cauldron, can it shoot through this wall? Classically, um, classically how hitboxes work. You should be able to shoot through it. Let's see. No? Got a mortar up here as well. Oh, okay. So they're overwatching that little section here. They did build a mortar. Not shooting it? Did they build another mortar? Oh, uh, did they use the mortar themselves? Ooh, they actually spot this mortar. This is a very good trip. Take it out. Does land? Does it land? Oh, it does go through. Nice. Okay. So I was expecting to see an explosion up the front, but actually it goes through. It actually does hit. Probably aiming at this section now. Can we see it fire through? So, um, CTE, we've seen this defense before against, um, who was it back at the time? Um, so, again, this is, this is really about timing. The mortars are being used, so, gonna have to, gonna have to catch them. Nice hit into the center of the. But as you can see, um, there's a little trick you can do. Um, you can there's a little trick you can do with uh, several units, but Medal um, Medals are pretty tricky as well. 
the frame that they change stance on, you can use it to ignore CC, and it's really cool. Um, I used to do it. Used to do it all the time with uh, loyal guards and expedition knights. Expedition knights, especially, um, doing the flash steps would make them almost uh, invincible to CC. So that was really funny back in the day. Uh, they changed it so that um, it's less likely to happen, but it does happen on occasions. It's kind of cool, but definitely not what you'd not what you want coded into your game. Kind of wanna adhere to some sense of semblance of realism. Lots of time here, giving up the A and the B point gives um, gives four seasons lots of time to use up all of their artilleries here. Let, let's take a look at their artilleries in fact. There we go. About 14 artilleries have been used. We still got 11 trebs. It's just a mortar battle for now. Ladders are being used, so mostly scout. Don't think they've really used it to um, do anything. Um, I think oh, four season did lose another guy, so we have three deaths to three deaths. So that's interesting to see that neither team has really lost too much. Sixty to about 170. Most of those 170 are surf units, so shouldn't be too bad for four seasons right now. Ah, very interesting to see that still conserving artillery when they can, but CTE definitely not, um, definitely aiming to take out the, so, the focus here is they're taking out, they're count, they're only deploying artillery to counter artillery and to counter the Metallotors, Metallotors are down to four units, so, this is very good, CTE wants to keep, wants to be able to keep their units in position for as long as possible, so that's why you have the long sword here. Um, not getting too many good shots, probably because of the reset you're gonna have to do. But that's it's heavy. Like getting hit several times constantly is super heavy. You will be feeling the pain as you keep getting hit, but long sword doing its job. We've got metallators coming up on here. The twelve. Uh, 12 unit one, so that should be the uh, bottom line. We won't see an engagement for a while, but another kill. My goodness, this short bow. What are you doing? Was that the short bow getting the kill? Two deaths. Someone's on their last life once he respawns. So, at that distance, I think a short bow is fine, but I think a long bow would be better at taking out. Um, Artillery now. So now they're probably looking. Four seasons probably running low on artillery. Ah, actually no, they still have twelve artillery left. They can keep going. Um, probably probably running low on time, mainly because major engagements has not kicked off yet. So both teams have max. Both team have max. Uh, well, like they barely lost anything. Like, let's be honest. CTE's probably down. Um, by one one squad of units compared to four seasons who have majority of their strong units still alive they've got one guy on critical so he's already died twice so four season needs to be careful especially that guy's on two death you kill him you you basically negate all of his other units so that is very important what CTE is doing really good job at is moving their medals every time that mortar comes in but hit nicely done whether or not they walk into that one again what the hell oh my god is fb2 is dead he's dead who's killing him i want to know who's killing him holy cow This is bad. This is real bad. That's hilarious as well. Is it the? Sh I don't know who's killing him, but I think it's a short bow. Think you could res? You think you could respawn constantly, but apparently not. Um, 
this changes everything. Four seasons, four seasons just dropped a unit, and they're on the attack. Uh, just, just dropped a hero, in, and they're on the attacking side. And my goodness, <laughs> um, whoever just whoever's permadeath must be feeling really bad right now. He is letting the team down. You honestly cannot afford to do much now. We've got two of the heroes getting caught out here, not starting. Like my goodness, another guy dies. Four Seasons being very careless now, going in one by one, and getting caught. Oh, it looked like we did lose some Iron Reapers here, probably too close to the side. Better off putting them in um, Lail mode. They won't move once you put them in Disperse Formation. I think if you put them in Column, they'll move, but if you put them in Disperse Formation, they won't move at all. They have to kick off a battle soon, otherwise they won't even have enough time to kill the enemy and take the base point. But here, it is scary. I think the scariest part is not knowing how to attack. And here on Riverland Castle, I think it's going to be a bit difficult. Oh my goodness. We have some Metallators firing directly into a pile of enemy. Taking massive damage there. That first volley already killed a couple of guys. Not to mention the amount of damage it would have dealt. Four Seasons also have another Metallator being deployed on the top of the stairs. Once they turn that corner, it's going to be a hell of a lot. But they see they see it, so they switch back. A formidable setup. A hard task. Four Seasons switch yet again. I think Four Seasons is going to try to keep switching until they see an opening. Uh, CTE is matching the rotations here. It will be a little bit shorter, but I think they're just w get tr waiting for an opportunity to get in on the Porta Barrage. Um, Metallators, they're right into the battle, sacrificing two guys for those Metallators. Not even clear onto it. We have a Wingdesar coming down like a ton. Oh my god, Porta we also have Narfan Guards also appearing. Very surprised to see some Berserkers. These Berserkers might be caught in a very awkward position. But more and more units are being flooded through. Four Seasons takes a heavy pounding. Seven heroes already died. And it will only continue as the massacre of Four Seasons. Jesus Christ, CTE is basically unmatched in the defense here on Riverland Castle. I'd say this is pretty much a done deal. This is this is the second time I've seen TTE here on Riverland Castle, but my goodness. It is brutal to attack these guys. These guys know what they're doing, and they will not give you an inch, not even a centimeter. Oh my goodness, they actually assassinated someone in a four um in a four no three V three V two there. Now it's a three V three. Taken out one after another. Four seasons. Whoa! One guy super low health. He gets away though. Short sword. Not getting caught. Does this glaive try? Oh my goodness. No, he gets blocked. Oh man. Does kill the short sword in the meantime. Um, thunder striking, but runs away. Again, no follow up there. What? Did that cataract charge? Or what? I feel like the cataract charged. Catching two of the cataracts there, that's uh, very unfortunate. Four seasons down a ton of units, by the way. 300 units down. CTE only lost around about 14 units in that engagement, and that is, that is cruel. This kind of defense on Riverland Castle? My goodness, like, I've seen some fast battles on Riverland Castle, but this... This is, this is, this is like, you don't know what to do. In this scenario, you don't know what to do. You've got, you've got plenty of artillery left. How many artillery? you got 10 artillery left and you're going in on, oh my god, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Both of the Metallators are here shooting downwards and Flamers getting close. Flamers from the um, Four Seasons as well also kills out the front line here. Front line from both sides is probably looking very thin after the flamers. But here comes some cataphracts. They won't die easily. 
We've got plenty of health, and they blast right through the remainder of the front line and kills off everyone. Holy cow. Two people left. We've got a we've got a ghost here on the wall coming up with Imperial Pike Guard. Oh man. Uh, the Iron Reaper is coming up. Actually doing quite a bit. Keep going, Iron Reapers. Now we got an Imperial Pike March coming through. Ghost surviving somehow, but he finally dies. My... Oh, man. And now CTE is spawn camping them here at the... Point blank Shenji grenade. That's gotta be painful. But reinforcements is coming. They're gonna be outnumbered here, and pretty much a lot of them are already dead. Not gonna say very much about this battle, but this battle was a done deal. CTE definitely showing you why the defense on Riverland, um, <laughs> showing you why defender advantage on Riverland Castle exists. That was an absolute mauling. Unfortunately, the um, sounds don't exactly work. <laughs> packing. Yeah, definitely sending these teams packing. Ah. Uh, I'd be honest, like, Four Seasons agreed to fight here on Riverland Castle. I don't even know how, what, um, how the map selection even works, but the fact that CTE got Riverland Castle is... Oh, compared to their... Compared to their previous battle, the, this is the exact same. The attacking team didn't know what to do, and CT like the attacking team did did sort of able to do something, but CTE definitely prepared for it, countering them really hard. So the retreat back into the base point for CTE was planned. I think they could have done it earlier, saved a unit, but it didn't really matter. They were. They lost nothing here on the wall. They're really careful about the ballista placement here on the triple on the triple ladders. They let the siege towers get up. They didn't want to waste any resources on those siege towers. And look at that exchange. Look at that exchange rate. Holy cow. Almost two to more than two to one, sorry. More than two to one. Absolutely brutal for four seasons. Taking a beating like no other. And, I mean, not very many people, no permadeath coming out from CTE, lots of permadeath coming out from Four Seasons. I think only one guy could have spawned at, by the end of that, that's pretty brutal. Um, I don't, yeah, BP, JP, um, JB2, what are you doing? Dying so early. He, he got, he got three deaths, three deaths already before any engage, any major engagements happening, and it's just like... What you doing? Why? Also, if I haven't said this before, John Rima, the sound alerts aren't on for these things, so it'll be queued up. Ugh, it'll be queued up the next time I on my normal one. Ugh. Nice fight. But my goodness, we're gonna, we're about to see um we're about to see the CTE attack. CTE attack is as fearsome as their um, defense, I would say. Falco sent them packing. Now Bond God sent them packing the second time. Man, the Nafan guards as well coming up. I did not expect that because I didn't see them. But on Riverland Castle, even if CTE was down one guy, I think they could have still held. That's how good their strategy is. All of their players know exactly what to do, when to commit. The wing to Sar charge to counter, to counter the push, even though the Valkanetis got locked up. And realistically, the 
the intensity of the range fire coming out from two Falconettis in like it's the stairs a literal stairs and it's and there's only one way you're gonna come in through you gotta get through two medals one guy has to reboot his computer apparently I still ask this question, after seeing CTE's defense, what do you do against that? Artillery fire is very difficult on that map. As you can see, CTE had had placement for artillery, it's already planned out, they are already overwatching, they destroyed a lot, and I mean a lot, of mortars. The mortars were very ineffective, mainly because they could not, um, could not get the hits in they needed. They could not suppress the medals on the stairs. They couldn't make a gap. Important thing here is that the mortars that placed down by four seasons on their attack couldn't make a gap. And CTE made sure they couldn't make a gap because they had good rotation of the units. They had good placement of counter artillery. And it really, really, really does show you that CTE's got. I think CTE has a strategy on Riverland Castles that is concrete, so concrete that I think, I think even, uh, I think, I think even Crusaders might struggle attacking CTE on the defense. This is, this, this is the level where I'm just like, I want to see someone crack it. I want to see, so I want to see a good team crack, crack the CTE defense, but whether or not it actually comes down to Riverland Castle, we'll, we'll have to wait. In the meantime, I'm just going to eat until the start of the next battle. Catch you guys. Hopefully I remember to unmute myself, unless you guys actually want to listen to me eat. Does look like we got the ready. Here we are on the second battle between CTE versus Four Seasons. Four Seasons. You're gonna have to hold the defense, otherwise. They're gonna have to hold the defense. 
for the to send it to a field battle tiebreaker. But CTE has shown their dominance in their defense. We're gonna see what their lineup is. I don't think the unit. Uh, I don't think the heroes have changed very much. So let's have a look. A little bit less cavalry than before. We've got only two cataphracts, one Northern Lands cavalry. Very interesting picks. We got triple Fenris, triple Fenrin. Um, Fenrin, Fen, Fen, One nap can. Very interesting pick. Probably going to suppress the um. Going to probably the suppress the ladders here with some bleed damage. One Imperial's beer guard. Interesting choice. Otherwise, another longsword put on to the table. Oh, looks like a metallator at the beginning. Going to spawn in that metallator with one Fenris pack. Um, Fenrir. Alchemist in reserve. Interesting pick. Line up for both sides doesn't look too stand outy. Uh, really, really watching out for some of those key units. The cavalry from there is a bit of cavalry from both hand sides. And as much as I love my ASMR Jean Rima, oh, maybe, maybe, maybe I'll just leave it on next time. <laughs> slurp, slurp, slurp. I really do gotta finish my dinner before it gets cold. Hey, CTE, can you end this in like five minutes? I I won't lie. I mean, like I've seen I've seen battles end really fast. Banana straight away trips the siege tower. I mean, bleh, trips the uh, cauldron. By the way, it is three minutes delay. So if you if you guys want me to respond instantly, uh, I'm gonna gonna have to try to just message it to you about to get some namcans in position ready to shoot interesting joy to have a mortar so close i think that mortar was going to try to shoot the namcans but i don't think it's gonna reach gonna try oh instead it goes close i'm gonna go for a closer trebs the other one as well namcans shooting across Doing well to suppress the um, suppress this section, actually. Whoa, Ballista headshotting one of their um, one of the guys from Four Seasons. Four Seasons, gotta watch out for those ballistas. I wouldn't take the chance. Getting shot by Namcans and getting shot by ballistas are quite a scary thing indeed. We got some surfs being thrown up as the suppression keeps going. Right hand siege tower did go down in the meantime. Middle uh, the gate has. Um, main gate getting battering, battered down right now. We have the secondary gate open. Left hand siege tower doesn't look to have very much suppression on it, so we'll get up onto the wall. Not on guards here inside with Iron Reapers and is that one or two sets of Shenji? I'm gonna say two sets of Shenji inside there. Lots of surfs being deployed. Ah. Uh, no heroes, by the looks of it, are being sent up. They're just probably trep baiting. So all of these serfs are just trep baiting. Good thing that they only had the Demez Pikemen here fighting them. Um, does does work out really well, mainly because the Demez Pikemen are better and can definitely kill quite a, more village watchmen. And again, 40 unit size, really big. Trebbing even just the Fenrin is uh, interesting. Runs away, trying to preserve the unit instead. Would try to just turn around and just... Oh, nom, nom, nom. Ah, uh, for some reason they just uh, stood still for a little bit. Very strange. Man, you are losing horses, you're losing men. No major pickups here. So, difference, the difference between the last time and this time is that no major pickups for CTE. CTE did get quite a bit of Iron Reapers, but... By the looks of it, um, Four Seasons haven't lost anything substantial. I mean, they've lost a couple of Fenrin, they lost an entire Demis Pikeman, and they're just finishing off some more Serfs. So, the next stage of this battle will really come down to what for um, CTE wants to happen, because they're definitely ready for a sally out. We've got a stare-off competition between some Medals and some Imperial Pikemen. So, the Fenrin 
wolf the veterans are definitely running around killing off killing off some surfs Oh, metallic tools are shooting directly into this um directly yeah, gatehouse gatehouse um i've seen i've seen people shoot into this gatehouse before i honestly i put my i put my guys here uh, for reference that angle is much harsher can get even deeper inside i think if you get the angle correctly you can actually shoot up to this section you actually have to stay up right against this wall on an angle about this this harsh in order to not get hit by anything but i've also seen um i've so also seen an archer being placed here and shooting directly inside Not giving up the wall just yet. We have some Fenrins back here, but we have some Palace Guards actually climbing here. Do they spot this? They go for the Iron Reapers instead. Good, good exchange here if they can get... Unfortunately, no. Too many of the um, Iron Reapers actually got up onto the wall, stun locking the Fen um, Fenrin before they could actually do too much damage. Still lost a couple of Iron Reapers though. I think um, I think they lost like a third of those Iron Reapers. If they lost half, it would have been worth it, but a third, not too much. Here on this section, Metalatoros shooting directly inside. Absolutely devastating that pile. Counter push now by um, Four Seasons. A bit too aggressive, I would say, but they can't exactly stay put and take shots forever. We've also got Nafan Guards already deployed. Already pushed up that stairs. Here comes, here comes the counter, counter push. Really good positioning from CTE, baiting in, baiting in the counter attack from Four Seasons. Four Seasons is dropping like flies. This exchange is going terribly for uh, Four Seasons as their front line has completely collapsed with the overextension and now losing some high valued range units. Gonna have to do a full retreat. I would fully retreat here, giving up the wall in this scenario. Lots of your guys are dead, respawning in a couple of seconds, but um, a couple of your guys just running away. Banner guards running away. No units actually follows down, which is very odd since... Very... Uh, actually, no. I'm not going to say very odd. It is actually a good control from CTE. Not overextending after a big victory, because there is a... Um, there is a massive respawn about to happen. Could lead to rapid attrition from both sides. Um, the pickup was good. Not completely massive. As you can see, the losses on both sides are pretty hefty. Still, I think, um, I think CTE still came out on top because the majority of those units would have been, um, already lost beforehand through surf losses. So, about 200 to about 200, so either equal losses or slightly up for for C, um slightly up for CTE and let me just uh yeah. delete that guy from the nether realm to the nether realm to the shadow realm I wish I could um I wish I could change that to be like Azakai sent Ton Kata one zero two um, one one two one to the Shadow Realm. That'd be funny. Whoa! What are you doing, Catafrax? Um, huge misplay. You have five Catafrax left. Oh my God! That is savage. <laughs> One cataphract down. That is that is huge, huge. I have to say, um, if Four Seasons actually hopped onto the wall, they would have noticed that the cataphracts are out, just sitting outside. You could go outside and just kill all these cataphracts. No one's gonna stop you. They're too far away. But that's what you get. I mean, like. Honestly, that was a huge misplay from CTE, losing that high-valued unit, especially one of your cataphracts. You only have, um, you only have so many cataphracts as it is. Two cataphracts left, one Northern Lance Cavalry. I haven't seen that on the field yet. Lots of medals being deployed, so this is going to be a... Whoa! A couple of guys retreating out of there, but we come down here onto the A point. They might 
get ready for a cataphract charge. No one's standing on the A point except for a Medal. The Medal is the one that's holding in this point. Too afraid to move forward. We got Narfine Guards at the front and some Bastion Wild... Um, no, not Bastion Wild Thing. We've got some... Balconetti Gunners just shooting directly at them. My goodness! What are you doing? You either go in or you don't go in. Probably waiting for more range fire, but they lose most of their Shenjis in that scenario. Now they're at a disadvantage as they've created... They've given themselves no space as they come in. Narfine Guards are two left. Wow, I did not see that flank there. Gets completely cleaned up by a cataphract though. But here comes the cataphracts from um, CTE. Lots of medals in a very, very awkward position. Right behind the, right inside this Pagoda thing. Actually, that works out for them. Um, the Pagoda thing does offer protection from um, from the Metallators, but the Metallators are not exactly aiming them. Another set of cataphracts coming in through heavy losses on both sides, but I think Four Seasons is doing a massive pickup here. The exchange is going badly um, for CTE. I think the Cataphract here could have cleaned up more units, but we're getting a back cap. That's going to be a, that's going to be a savage um, distraction here, as some guys have already been diverted. The battle here at A is still raging on. We've gotten the supply point also captured in the back here. Uh, the number of heroes dead on the Four Seasons side is huge though, so A point will get picked up very shortly as Four Seasons is waiting on respawns. Wow. Alright, although the exchanges did went really well at the beginning, I think Four Seasons running out of heroes, I mean the heroes dying one by one, um, really showed, really showed in the end. The engagement. I was surprised. I thought for, I, I was surprised. I thought CTE had the engagement. I thought they were stronger in the engagement there, but not so much anymore. Now respawning here at the A point. CTE. CTE still's got a little bit more in the bank than uh, Four Seasons, but Four Seasons realistically only needs to hold off, fend off one more, one more strong attack, and then it will just be a surf battle. I think, um, I think CTE might be reserving some more of their units here. Uh, they got quite a bit of surfs out. Not as many as, uh, not as many as Four Seasons, though. Four Seasons definitely looking pretty thin on the tier 5s. Gonna have to make perfect use out of what is remaining. We've got some Nancans shooting. I'm not even sure where they're shooting at. I guess they didn't try this position too well. I think uh, putting them here could make it work, but you need to somehow actually spot this position. Pretty sure if you put the Namcans here, you can actually just shoot directly over into here. Lots of mortars being built. Ah, uh, lots. Three! Three mortars have been built. How many artilleries are we talking about? Oh wow, actually not that many artilleries left, about three uh, three for CTE, we got more for Four Seasons actually, so Four Seasons could make good use of those artilleries and aim for very particular spots. Not going to fight on the stairs like their, um, like their opponents here, going straight up through the front section here, we're going to fight on top of this stairs, Treb's still inbound, trapping the back section, not going to be a good Treb though. Got some Royal Janus and Brutal Bike March just going straight forward, slapping straight through. We've got some North Lines Cavalry. Line after line of Demez Pikemen. We've got Imperial Bike March here through the center. We've got Cataphracts trying to go through the. Oh, uh, no, Cataphracts. Northern Lines Cavalry going through the center here. The line is breaking down for four seasons, unable to slow down the tide of infantry, heavy infantry and cavalry just plowing their way through these surfs like nothing. I don't think anything substantial. The one medal they did have has died. The heroes have died. Nine heroes have died, in fact. We got five heroes left for four seasons. Four seasons. Four seasons getting picked apart here, hero by hero. Very strong attack. There is the you are too weak taunt, and going straight in for a base uh, demoralize, a demoralizing spawn kill. 
None, not a single member of, um, not a single member of Four Season is alive. A little bit toxic here. I'm not going to, um, I'm going to say that I really dislike CTE for doing this. And I don't condone spawn killing when you're the attacker. Just win. Just win, please. I don't care. If you want to spawn camp the enemy, just win. Because doing this, look at this, look at this. No one's alive to stop him, by the, the way. About to capture the final flag. No one's alive to stop him. And he's wasting our time as the observer. And it looks awful for them. CTE. I would penalize you. If I was the host. Unfortunately I'm not. Booming Tech. I I'm pretty much they I'm pretty much sure that they accept that this can happen and I think it looks bad from my perspective as a as an observer. It looks very bad. You're watching these teams fight it out, be super desperate, and then you have this. This is basically trolling. This is basically trolling. You you're not winning. You're not winning, or your 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 or your refusal to end the game when you can is so disrespectful that I'd rather you, even if you were the best team in the world, I'd rather you not play. I'd rather you not play because it is it's disrespectful to the people that you're playing against and I hate it and I hate it so congratulations to CTE winning both the defense and attack here on Riverland Castle they are still the best team for Riverland Castle I've seen in this entire t um, in this entire um, in this entire scoring phase so far they're both really good at attacking they're both um, they're really good at attacking and they're really good at defending unfortunately I have not seen them on other maps so they might have Riverland, Ca um, Riverland Castle down packed, but whether or not they got other maps in their repertoire will be another question of whether or not someone could actually send it, send them to a different map. Unfortunately, we've got Riverland Castle twice for the times we've viewed CTE. I do believe CTE is one of the top rankers for their um, groupings, so I think four seasons. I think four seasons will be sent down. Whether or not they'll be um, sent down out of the top four is another question. I do have to check up with Zombie. Jay, since he has all of the points scored up, um, up to date every time, so do check him out because he is a, he definitely offers a lot of thing. But as you can tell, battle really strong for four seasons at the beginning. Heroes, the hero kills is devastating though. Four seasons strong on the unit control here. Devastated by the hero. Unit control good. Hero battles bad. Bad, 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 bad. You 31, 34 kills to 9. Not getting kills, fine. But not dying, also good. Unfortunately, a lot of them permadeathing and a lot of them just leaving in the end. So, again, CTE. I don't condone this kind of spawn killing. It's not part of... It's simply... It's simply easier for the attacker just to take the point than for you to spawn camp the defenders. You can use spawn camping the defenders at different times of the game, but when you're doing your final push towards the fi final base point, just win the game. I don't mind... I don't mind spawn killing as a tactic. I don't... What I don't like is spawn killing as a... Um... That's a mockery. What do you call it? What do you call what do you call the actions? Oh my god. What do you what do you what do you call the actions of something just fucking damn it man. That that's yeah, that oh man. I don't know what to say. Like th there's a word. I know it exists of how you describe this type of action where they don't need to do it. But they do it anyway. 
just to spite you, or just to... Ah, oh, man. Yes, John Rehm, I agree. CTE might have won, but not our hearts. I don't like watching these guys when they win. I want someone to take them down a peg. At this point, they're no notorious. <sighs> man. Well, I'm going to relax for a bit until the next set of battles. We've got about 13 minutes before the next set of battles begins. So I'll catch you guys in 13 minutes. I'm going to finish up my dinner, hopefully by then. Um, but I hope you guys enjoyed that section. Although, I don't, don't like the ending part. Again, it always puts a sour... Um, always give me a heavy heart when I watch... Um, when I watch spawn killing like that. I much prefer people to respect each other. I much prefer people to play nice. And I like to see people fight their very best. But when people simply... When people simply, um... Taunt... Or posture in, oh, taunt posture. I don't know what to call it. But when they do something like that, I don't like it. I'll never like it. I'll never do it. I hope I'll never do it. If I ever do that, I'm just, I'm going to shoot myself in the head. But we're going to be catching the um, MTA versus um, WLBG on Riverland Castle yet again. And in about 12 minutes. So, until then, I'll catch you. So, I'm gonna catch you. Ugh, in 12 minutes for that battle. See you guys.
And we're back. I have not finished. Apparently, I could not finish that in 12 minutes. I've seen some speed ears, but it's just in 12 minutes. Probably left. Waiting on one more member from MTA. Let's check out their names. I forgot what their names are. I believe WLBG is We Love Big Guns. Avengers! Yeah. Nothing to do with them. Yeah, nothing. Like, <laughs> MTA. Probably something related to something Marvel Avengers. Like, Marvel's Avengers or something. You guys don't mind me eating too noisy. Apparently I'm really loud when I eat. Ah, we love big gates. There we go. That's what um, WLBG is. We love big gates. And we cannot lie. I tried. Went straight into the. Went straight into the actual. <laughs> and it's me love, by the way. Avengers call for a wait. Whoa! Lots of... muskets. Alright, WL... BG is going to attack first. We got... quite a few Fort Brushes in the back. Well, here comes a massive change in lineup right now. We got... Whoa! WL, BG going in really confident with a double cavalry. Does switch out one of the cavalry for a medal. Anyway, looking over to Avengers, we got two cataphracts, two winged stars. Whoa! Two guys going out with th three guys going out with the same lineup. Four muskets as well. Again, what's with muskets being very popular right now? Probably because you're on the defense on the wall, so that is probably it. Lots of mortars, two ballistas, otherwise lots of cauldrons. I think Avengers might here suppress the siege towers, but. Wow, that's a lot of cavalry. Up to five cataphracts and four winged assars. Not a lot of anti-cavalry coming out from um, WLBG. They're going to have to be very careful once they hit the ground. They can take the B section pretty easily, I think. Uh, lots of superiority for infantry on the WLBG side. Interesting look to see five muskets for the attacking I'm wondering, I'm wondering if that's going to help them. This will actually be the first battle I see of WLBG.
Woo-wee! Master for free. Instantly retreating into... Base point. That trip hit low? It didn't destroy both the culprits. That's really sad. That would be. I would posture a little bit. This pike could be brave and come down. We got one musket popping up. They will notice that the entire section is abandoned. Should open that front gate, go down to A, open that, have guys move in through. WLBG is retreating now. The last two mem two guys retreating from the far side. Whoa! <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh my god. Oh my damn. That is, that is hilarious. I've never seen people take pot shots this far away. I've never seen anyone take out the trebs on this map. Maybe trained themselves a lot to take out the trebs. Even if you take out, even if taking out every single treb. You don't need to take out every single treb. Probably, I mean like if you do, that's massive. Oh, it takes out that one. There's only three trebs left, my goodness. <laughs> yeah, I'll be honest, I've never seen this kind of strategy. Taking out the trebs here, probably losing the value. We got, uh, oh, sorry, we're missing out the battle here. Or a little bit of a skirmish. Oh, musket actually gets away! Hey, danger close musket. Looking death in the face as the uh, royal janitor is walk walking around, walking around. Um, taking, taking shots, getting shot at is, uh, not the greatest. Ah, uh, would I go for the Claymores or would I go for the Berserkers? I mean, <clears throat> in terms of model to leadership, uh, Berserkers, if you kill one Berserker, that's huge. Like, seriously, there's only eight of them. You kill one Berserker and you and there's only seven left. There's 20 claymores, so I mean, like... Twenty claymores, but they can get really tanky. For sure, for sure, for sure. We got a bit of a mortaring style happening right now. 13 minutes. So, massive retreat into the base point, leading into a long-ass time of mortaring. Lots of resources ready to be used. Got trebs, but... No trips! Well, they technically have one trip left. How much health does it have? Let me just have a look. You whoosh. Oh my god! They probably just missed one shot. That's actually pretty sad. I mean, it's almost at a point where I just be like, I just hop down and actually just walk up and destroy it. <laughs> I did that once. I was just like, I think I was on this side here. They couldn't get up. I was, and I destroyed one of the. Um, and I got the treb down to like a little bit of health. I jumped. Um, once they pushed into A, I jumped down, walked a, um, walked right through, right through units that were just running past me, and just went for the trebs at the back. <laughs> I destroyed it in the end. Very funny day. Um, interesting placement for a grape shot. I think the crenellation will protect them mostly. You you can take a heavy shot though. It is a shotgun, but it won't kill you. Um, the muskets in this scenario is pretty massive. Close com um very close by. Does take out the grape shot. Now I have free reign to take out the um. Oh, interesting. That was the five round rapid coming out from one of the uh, Deadpool here. Mortaring is happening. I don't think it's going to be very effective, uh, mainly because it's not even hitting target. The Metallator can hit directly onto these guys, but unfortunately I think it's going to be a bit difficult to get the Metallator to shoot that side. Trying to adjust it as much as possible, I guess. 
Whoa! Someone died? Who died? Where did he die? Avengers, gotta be careful. I mean, like, falling down is probably what you gotta be careful about. Mortis facing us directly in the face. Whoa! Alright, okay, so, I see what's probably happened. Um, Ballista, the Ballista, I didn't even see the Ballista from that distance. Um, Ballista here overwatching these ladders, so trying to kick down these ladders. Um, probably gonna get a Ballista to the face there. And in most scenarios, unless you run toughness, a Ballista to the face, especially a blue one, will instantly kill you. So that's gotta be, uh, that's gotta be very devastating. A lot more posturing is happening. I don't think... Oh, we got two. Two left. Otherwise, we got 15 artillery left for the attackers. Attackers could go for another round of heavy-hitting mortars and stuff. But... I'll be honest. Being here at the top of the stairs... I think you could actually do a push onto one side. Full force it onto one side. Face them. Face the incoming, so you slam right through, create enough space, set up here. This turn, this turn is actually really difficult for the defenders to fight. You actually, the defenders actually are better off funneling on the backside here and pushing forward. This water rusher is also really in a really good position, unflankable in this case. Otherwise, the flank would take forever. So, you can create a kill box, which is much more effective than simply just holding them at the top of the stairs. This kill box here could also involve ranged units. I mean, I've seen ranged units sit. I've seen... <clears throat> I've had a Pavis sit right here, and I had a good old... Um, I had a good old shield sitting here. I did get I did get a couple of heroes jump up across, but I switched them to shield mode, and they just bashed, bash, bash, bash the heroes back. But that was back in the day when Pavis was much, um, were more used, and there were less infantry that was uh, really strong. So it took forever to get for them to get through the shields, and I just shoot them to pieces by the time they did. The medals at the front here are probably extremely wounded, and going in with palace guards first is actually really good. Oh my goodness, what was that? Flames coming through. We got winged stars also going through. Nice imperial bike march. Water Russia is still holding barely. But the sheer mass of infantry is coming on through. I don't know where the flames are coming from, but cataphracts coming in from the side very awkwardly. We've got Nafan guards in the center here. Going to be very deadly if they don't take it out. But the cataphracts are coming in super hard, absolutely wiping the floor with what's here. We've got some berserkers cleaning up. I think the berserkers here, with what scattered fight remains, will definitely clean up. Um, I'll be honest, that was pretty, pretty strong hold. Ooh, got some Iron Reapers here in the back, killing out a Medal. <laughs> Cataphracts on the, on the wall here, never like to see that. Iron Reapers coming in from behind. This is going to be deadly. Cataphracts do a point-blank charge, but the Iron Reapers are still healthy as they chop right through the Cataphracts. Um... The Fort of Russia has turned around and hitting them, but that is a good pickup. Half of that cataphract is dead because of those Iron Reapers, and the Imperial Pike is also half dead. So I think that's a good pickup, mainly because every cavalry down will definitely, um, definitely give them more of an advantage. The Berserkers, in fact, still retaining up to seven, seven people. Shield Maidens out on the field. Nice to see them around, but whether or not they're going to be effective. The exchanges here are quite promising for the defenders, I think. Because equal exchange means that the defenders will actually come out on top. Being in the defensible position, it becomes harder and harder for the attackers to really push in without, a, without any kind of superiority. They need to make space up on top of the up on top of the base point here, otherwise they won't be able to bring anything to bear. Treb is useless, they have no more Trebs left, so that got destroyed. Oh yeah, there was this one time, there was this one time, um, I was shooting Trebs, 
and I was a longbow, and the Trev had like a little bit left to go. I spent one minute tr shooting it. Was it worth it? I think it was. But setting up for the second attack, um, WLBG not looking very strong right now as they're getting peppered down by a lot of muskets. I mean, there's five muskets on, um, there's, no, sorry, there's only three muskets from Avengers' side. WLBG actually going in with a lot of muskets. I, I said this before, like, it's actually weird seeing so many muskets on the attacking side. I thought the, um, I thought the five muskets were on the defending side for some reason, even though I knew that they were on, um, WLBG side, or whatever. Um, lots of cavalry still in reserve. I mean, I think two cataphracts got taken out. Uh, well, I mean, I think one's half squad, another one's, um, another one's half squad. But we've got two winged stars already deployed, and we got cataphracts. We got four, up to four winged stars, in fact, but we, uh, I can't seem to swap them for now. Oh, there they are. Um, starting off the push already. Lots and lots of medals. Could go for an attrition style. Imperial Pike walk smashing. But here comes the first set of Wing Sars. Not a good charge, directly dead on into the pointy end of a um, pike. Deadly. Wing Sar coming in. Oh, nice swipe on the side there, taking out the Iron Reapers and a couple of Cataphracts. But the Cataphracts from the attacking side coming in through. But here comes the cataphracts from the remainder. Ooh, no, not charging very well there. Actually getting caught for a lot of sections. Ow! That's gotta hurt. Cataphract from the, um, the attacking side gets absolutely decimated by a wing star charge down those stairs. So now we're about to hit the second section where they've created space, but they're getting shot by some metallators. No trebs to nail or an <clears throat> out to take. Kid. So it's just free damage. Got some grape shots already being put down. Unable to stabilize their positions because the medals are mostly finished off here. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Two heroes down. We got the cataphract still making a mess. Unable to forge a front line. Really need to uh, establish. Really need to establish a safe haven for heroes who recuperate. But cataphract's coming down, eliminating that prefecture pike. That's going to be very devastating, but here could be a nice catch. Demez Pikeman do have one of the stronger passives. Basically, it's like a mini medal. Three hits from these guys, and they'll send a, send a cavalry packing. Could be a finishing pickup as well, capturing more and more with those Demez Pikeman. Trying to force its way through is always the most fascinating thing of a cataphract um, follow charge. Winged Huzzah coming down constantly coming down these stairs man this is this is the kind of strategy that I seen a long time ago WBLBG does look like to have lost a member probably from permadeath and decided to um, yeah it looks like he decided to clock out for now what's probably brutal here now is that after the second push WLBG um, got probably nothing in the bank, nothing in, nothing to really contest against the remaining cavalry and probably the remaining infantry. Got some claymores here already devastating. They're literally just throwing cavalry down this one stairs and bringing them back up. Claymores have been let go. Probably not the smartest idea. Got something substantial finally at the front gate. I mean, at the front. Hey, woodcutters and. Imperial Pikeman, but the Winged Star's coming in through. Nice! Oh, nice musket bomb on the side there, catching four of the those Winged Stars. Got Metallators as well. My goodness, the Imperial Pike... Imperial Pikeman are the only things that would really be able to deal with the cavalry right now. And they've got one Winged Star probably ready to go. I think the Winged Star that just charged and pulled off. These guys are cycle charging like crazy, but WLBG haven't given up yet. They've got two minutes left to go, and it's a surf army. Here comes the Wing Sar charge right down these. Get semi stopped, but nah, it's a tidal wave victory.
for um, for Avengers here as more cavalry just rocks it on through the center pile actually surviving somewhat Imperial Pikemen actually walking Flamewalls finish up the infantry and the cavalry rocks on through to try to finish off the heroes heroes are desperate to leave this area as they retreat I think only four members being alive right now oh man two members three members left alive outside of the city gate with one minute ten seconds to go it will be a hunt hunt for the remainder attackers very unfortunate for WLBG unable to contest the cavalry constant cavalry chargers have been um, downstairs no, downstairs have classically been something of the past I've seen defenses do that before the, the getting rid of the trebs was probably good actually But when it comes down to it, Riverland Castle is super heavily um, defender is defender orientated. I I strongly believe that defenders have a bigger advantage, but it also depends on whether or not the defender can make use of that advantage. As you can see, the quality and the strength of every team really depends on the strategy they employ. Not to mention the countering strategies. Nothing much to say. Can't really pinpoint anything that was spectacular. Avengers really just steamrolling um, WLBG with the cavalry. Cavalry just coming down those stairs constantly. Starting off strong. Over overwhelming in infantry. But once you... The second push was better because lots of pikemen and medals just bracing around the place. But as you can tell... Cavalry charge after cavalry charge. First wing to saw didn't work. Second wing to saw didn't work. Well, second wing to saw kind of worked. Cataract comes rolling through. Kind of gets hit on the side there. Another cataract comes through. A lot of the units are worn, have been worn down, worn out. And in the end, um, they die. They were able to push through, but unable to stabilize. So, Falconetti is also providing some nice support. I really, I'm really... I'm really skeptical on the balance of cavalry as in that exchange it was like in, in, in that scenario it's it's such a such a devastating exchange like you'd think one cavalry like you'd think a medal catching a cavalry would be huge pickup but then you then you just realize it's just like no matter how many cavalry I kill if one cavalry gets through I'm dead and that's what happened the medals got worn out by the number of cavalry charges they took, and eventually they just dropped dead. So once they dropped dead, everything else died. And that's one of the thing. I don't mind that bikemen are anti cavalry, like hard counters. I mind that they are the only counters. Cavalry is so obnoxiously OP that. Unless you're a pike unit, <laughs> you can't do shit to cavalry. And I mean that wholeheartedly. It's honestly the worst design for a, for a game like this. Because, first of all, cavalry just rolls right through, ignoring collision. So, where is M -A -T, uh, MTA from? Unfortunately, I actually do have no information on that. By the looks of their names, it does look like, um, does look like they are very, very Western. So, I'm going to have to say that, um, I'm going to have to say they're probably uh, from an English community, but probably not one from Asia. Ah, and definitely not from the EU. I've had someone confirm the, te um, the teams that are from the EU. And apparently, um, Avengers is probably, um, Avengers not one of them. It was Kebabs. 
J K K T and who was the last one? Or maybe the or maybe these guys are the la other team from um other team from EU. That may be it. Maybe. Ah. My memory is not really that great, and I don't really keep this information on a um on a notes thing. I remember someone telling me that there's three EU teams, so M A um M T A may maybe be from like a different Asia um maybe from a different Asia English community, but chances are these guys are actually from um one of the three teams from the EU. Following, well, it kind of makes sense because I know that J K K T is definitely from the EU. Kebabs is apparently from the EU, and if my guess is correct now, MTA is from EU. So, there's that. I don't know who WLBG is. None of their names look really familiar, but it's definitely Asian. As you can- oh, I mean, I might be racist here, but that's Kanji, right? Does look like the call for ready is in game. Oh, we're about to see. Just waiting for M MTA to ask, um, say ready. They ask for a wait, then go, go, go. Go, go, go with my loop. Go and go and go with my loop. Cavalry still. Definitely love their cavalry. If this does get sent down to a field battle, I don't think um, I don't think WLBG is going to be able to contend. But I say that they have brought some winged stars, so I'm gonna have to wait until those winged stars. We see engagement from those winged stars. Still going out with those three muskets, but we got one, two, three, four, five muskets out from WLBG. Also going with the ton of culverins. We got one, two, three, four. What rushes as well? A mixture of royal janissaries and iron reapers, but very little medals. Very little medals. So that is going to be very important. As controlling the enemy cavalry is 90% of what you do for these, some of these games. I don't think it's an easy job, but catching cavalry can be huge. Their potential is, again, kind of crazy. Cavalry's potential for damage is... Unreal. Out of all of the units in game, cavalry. What is happening? Trebbing the front gate. I am very interested in this approach. Four culverins being blast used to blast through the front gate right now. We've got what two Fort Russia is set up ready for a front gate push, but. I'm really wondering how this is going to turn out. Main gate has been destroyed. I'm pretty sure WLBGT 
is being notified right now. All of the units are on towards the front gate right now. What are the four Rashios have pulled off? Where are you going? Secondary gate has gone down. What Rashio is retreating, in fact. Cataphracts could come through, but Imperial Pike Punch, nice catch! Oh no, the retreat has failed as a literal landslide of cavalry are going to come run running through as they rip right through those retreating units right now. Water Brashios is also here at the top of the stairs. Turn around, turn around! Not in position, Cataphracts just blow right through the Water Brashio. This might be the fastest game yet! Cavalry will have a cooldown as the reset is happening. But unfortunately, whatever Iron Reapers that was standing there just disappeared into the sea of cavalry. This is an all or nothing. I'm surprised WLBGT, um, WLBG called for a treat in that scenario. I would have definitely held that front gate at least. Someone had to. Imperial Pike walk just walks right through. Flamers here. We got some Nafan guards burning down that front line. So, but it's an even fight for now. We got, I take that back. It's actually not an even fight. Avengers actually winning. Berserker's going crazy. Messing up those, um, messing up those um, medals. Short Swords being extraordinarily desperate. But here comes the Cataphracts. The Cataphracts probably rocking around, um, rocking around, ready with their next ability to rush something. Wow, this is, this is a fast battle right now. Cataphracts going straight up through. That was the, that is the most aggressive Cataphract I've ever seen. But the Imperial Pike Walk still goes through, hitting their own troops as they just shove more and more. Cataphracts coming through the backhand side as well. Wow, massive, big massive, um, massive misplay from W, um, WLBG from, um, just then. The retreat was slow. The setup for the Porta Brachios, you should have stayed there. You should have challenged them at the front gate. It was already too late to retreat out. Not to mention, you got ran, you got ran out by cavalry the entire time. Big misplay from there. Not much to say as well, because that was a fast battle. Not, <laughs> couldn't, I couldn't say anything about strategy or terms of, um, terms of, like, things. Severely unprepared. WLBG, WLBG, you knew they were coming through the front gate, but you still retreated, and taking a straight on head fight, really good for you, because you know where they're going, and you know, and you, and you could have took you could have taken that fight at the front gate, but you're starting to retreat. It just led to your downfall, and it's whoa, savagely ends up in your defeat. And I can't say anything else besides a massive, a massive, massive misplay. But also, Avengers very risky, very very risky. You're lucky that the enemy didn't set up any defenses, but a, um, but yeah, John Rima. Blitzing right through the enemy defenses onwards with the cavalry, rushing them like no tomorrow. And again, that blitz, when you're blitzing, you can't slow down. You can't slow down one second because that border brush, you know, if you let that border brush, you know, even three, maybe two more seconds to set up, any cavalry coming up through that gate is going to take massive damage. That border brush you know, was seconds away from reaching the very top of those stairs and in ready in position. But the cataphract blasts right through it. Lots of cataphracts, in fact. And the infantry follows up. Big misplay from W um, WLBG. Enough said. That is that is all for tonight. Um, quickest battle I've seen. As you can tell, we've got two minutes on the clock. We got two minutes on the clock. It's not a very long battle. And I'm gonna say, at the very least. Um, at the very least, what am I going to say? Avengers, you're, you got some, you got, you got confidence. You definitely got confidence. I would not risk a blitz play. I would not risk such a risky play 
on the off chance the enemy is not ready. Um, but it's it's great. Sometimes it's great watching 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 it work out, and I kind of love it as well. <clears throat> it like to me. Um, I watch many a battle. Mostly, mostly it was. Um, I've really got to say that it's mostly going to be the um just W L B G, just not being ready for anything. Well, not being ready, unable to stabilize, but that's also part of what the strategy entails. You you rush the enemy and you leave them in the dust. You hit them so hard, so fast that they are disorientated. And that's what happened. And that's so cool. And that's it's fun to watch actually. I'm not going to lie, it's fun to watch. A blitz like that Amazingly well done, I would say. Congratulations, um, MTA. You have gone. Uh, you have won the day 2-0 against WLBG. But I don't think WLBG. Um, I don't think WLBG um, had too many detriments. I think they did put in a really good effort. I think uh, too many muskets could have definitely um, could have definitely spiced up the well. Could have definitely figured out a more interactive hero experience. Again, muskets on the attack five, in fact, a little bit questionable, but did did get a put good effort. Um, other than that, we have the last set of battles scheduled for the 26th, so on Saturday. Unfortunately, we only have five battles scheduled for that day. And we have for Group A in the second um, Group A in the second on the second um, set se in the second set DQS versus BPJ, and in Group B first set is GPPC versus TKH. In Group C in the second set we have T versus OIO, and then D Group D we have Pleb versus DFS. Followed by MGK versus AMA, and that's pretty much it. I mean, lately, I mean, on the 22nd, we had some amazing, amazing display of, um, t like we had some amazing things to watch. Also from the SA division, some amazing battles we watched then, and even now, today, very, um, some exciting matches to watch. Especially the second set. That blitz. Fastest battle ever. Fastest battle ever in CBL, I think. I'm pretty much sure that's the fastest battle ever in CBL. And I'm going to say that um, I really, truly do had fun watching you guys. And I love commenting for these tournaments. And it's just lovely to see teams. Sometimes when, 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 when a strategy or when a... When a when a plan comes together and it works out, it looks and feels amazing. But that is all for tonight. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. But other than that, my name's Azakai. Have a nice day. Bye now. And thank you, John Rima. And hello, the brothers Grim. Hello, Amada. So I hope, um, so I hope you guys, hope to see you guys on Saturday. We do have a TW. Not to mention, we actually have the South American Division tournaments in roughly around 10 hours. 10? Yep. And roughly around about 10 hours and 20 minutes, we have, um, we actually have the SA Division second day of scoring phase. They have a third day of scoring phase on the Saturday, which is actually Monday morning for me. So, I uh, hope to catch you then. Otherwise, bye for now, and catch you at TW. Well, catch you until next time.